all of the amazing innovations that we've heard of so far this morning, I just want to steal them all. <laughs> Computer science in three, the BOLD program. I hope you don't mind. Um, but we're going to share with you an innovation today that we've been working on that's designed to be shared and scaled. And uh, what I'm talking about is the program Pathways Mapper. And that'll be the focus of our uh, panel discussion today. So I've got some slides to share with you, just to give you a quick overview. In case you're not familiar with the program Pathways Mapper and why it exists. It's a tool to help clarify the path for our students. So we talk about the Guided Pathways Framework in California, and there are four pillars to that framework. The first pillar is clarifying the path, and that's what we need to do to bring students into the college. And when we did a survey of our students at Bakersfield College, we found out that many of those students were not availing themselves of the standard resources that we expected them to use. Uh, in fact, the majority of the students were using non-standard resources to clarify their path. So they were relying on friends, uh, family, online resources. So what do we do to help those students clarify the path? They come to us, first generation students, they're wondering. They want to know, um, where's my career? How can I be successful? How much time is this going to take? Uh, how am I going to balance my responsibilities? And, you know, where am I going to get lunch on campus? <laughs> and the program mapper doesn't really help you find lunch. It doesn't go quite that far. We're working on it, though. Um, so what have we traditionally done for those students as they've come onto the campus? We've given them the catalog. That's, that's the safety net for students. This is, this is the catalog of our programs. This is how you make your way through the general education requirements and through the requirements of the program. Unfortunately, the traditional catalog reads something like computer code. So this is actually the, um, the GE requirements uh, at Bakersfield College. So it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge even for faculty members to find the path. When we've, asked, when we've tasked faculty members with creating pathways through programs that they're not familiar with, uh, they, they will often come back and say, you know, okay, you asked us to make a map through the chemistry program. Here's, here's a map through the English program because we couldn't figure chemistry out, right, after two hours. <laughs> so what we did is we applied design thinking in partnership with the Chancellor's Office for the California Community College System and our design uh, partner in uh, Concentric Sky to create these really quite intuitive, um, attractive, online interactive program maps. And program maps are a fundamental plank of the Guided Pathways framework. And we create them, of course, to clarify the path for our students. But what we find when we work on them is that we are also clarifying the path for ourselves. Because, um, and, we're, and we're finding all kinds of interesting things out about our curriculum. And then uh, at Bakersfield, we've also worked to clarify intersegmental pathways. So we're doing curricular, uh, intersegmental curricular data sharing. And that's very exciting. So we, we have the um, program called Finition 4, which was uh, mentioned earlier. And um, as, I, as I said, the program mapper is designed to scale. So it started at Bakersfield College. It was funded by an innovation award from the chancellor's office. And part of the, um, one of the kind of strings attached to that innovation award when you get that funding is that you're building something not just for yourself, you're building something to share across the system. So we've, uh, we had early implementers, several early implementers, one of whom's uh, joining us on stage today, um, Joanna Schilling from president of Cypress College. And uh, we've, um, then had a second wave of um, participants coming on board. So we have 27 community colleges that are um, implementing the program mapper. And now we have CSUB coming on board. And we're just so incredibly stoked about that, right? 
Because that, that's really, that's, that's taking it to the next level. And one of the things that we've learned is that it's, it's great to have clear program maps for your institution. But when you, it's like having a computer, right? Computers are pretty nifty. But when you network those computers together, and when you network those maps together, it becomes a something else. There's an emergent phenomenon of wayfinding that we really are looking forward to taking it to that next level. So the CSUB project is really a prototype for the CSUB system, or for the entire CSU system. So uh, just a, I'll wrap up real quick and we'll get into the, the panel. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit different than the um, presentations you've heard so far, which were you know, so well choreographed and organized, so I thought we would do something different and just you know, not be that. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we'll do a little, we'll do some question and answer up here about experiences with the program mapper. But what the, you're seeing on the screen right now are the Google Analytics from our first year of implementation of Program Mapper at Bakersfield College. And so it's been up and running live. You can go pull it up on your phone right now. It's completely mobile friendly and accessible and, and wonderful in every way. Um, but what we've seen is just steady growth in the use of the Program Mapper. So we've had 25,000 unique users so far this year, visit it 50,000 times, view on average 6.39 pages, uh, per user, so that's over 300,000 page views. And moreover, we know by where they enter the program mapper and where they exit the program mapper that they're using it as the design intended. So they're starting by exploring our meta majors, then exploring the clusters of programs within those meta majors, and then they look at, a, at several of the, de the uh, most detailed program maps where we have the um, labor market information and those wonderful maps, those interactive maps that you saw earlier. So uh, we're just extremely excited to see that it's, it's uh, working as planned um, at Bakersfield College, but it is a tool that we're scaling up and using in <clears throat> myriad ways. So um, I'm gonna now turn it over to our panel and ask you all uh, a few questions. So um, Justin, I'm gonna start with you. Um, you're the principal of McFarland High School. What can you tell? Can you tell us a little bit? Of, all right. Got all right. Well, um, I'm Justin Derrick. I'm the principal of McFarland High School Early College. Uh, we are the first official level three early college in the country where every single one of our incoming freshmen this year are actually Bakersfield College renegades. We, uh, we service 3,539 students uh, in our district, 993 currently enrolled at the high school. Uh, we are 97.48% uh, Hispanic, 0.3% Asian, 0.4% Filipino, 0.5% African American and black, and then uh, we have 1.31% white students at our school. So we, we are heavily EL. 100% uh, free and reduced lunch. Uh, all of our students do receive free lunch at our school. Uh, low socioeconomic, so we, we aid our kids as much as we possibly can, but we need to bridge the gap that, that we have between our students going off to college and finishing college. So um, our, our goal was to give early access to all of our students uh, through guided pathways, eight different guided pathways, and uh, two ADTs with a 30 and 60 credit pathway uh, for an associate's degree in Spanish that can automatically roll over into CSUB. Uh, we envision our graduation in four years to be uh, students coming up and receiving their high school diploma, receiving their BC associate's degree, and then shaking the hand of President Lynette Selesny as they enter into CSUB's uh, baccalaureate program. So uh, we've been working very diligently to provide our students a multitude of angles and different directions that they can achieve different certificates through uh, their guided pathways. I wanna thank Sonia Christian, President Sonia Christian and Steve uh, uh, Watkins and, and Jean Fuller for all of their help, uh, Kylie Swanson and her team. Uh, and uh, we, we especially wanna uh, thank Abel Guzman and Chris McCrow for helping us to get our, our our school headed in the right direction, but the biggest, well, in, in a good direction, I don't want to say the right direction, but the direction it was already headed in. So um, the biggest thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is that we, we've achieved the highest graduation rate for the past four years in Kern County, but what's happening after that? What's going on after that? What are we doing for our kids after that to make sure that they are going to continue to improve and progress 
and achieve and not stop after that first year of college. So our job is to ensure that they are not TK to 12 ready, that they're TK to CC ready, which is college and career readiness. And that's what we're totally focused on and moving forward in. So much to the point that our new, uh, our new model for early college was just uh, uh, awarded the Golden Bell Award by the CSBA and we'll be down in, uh, down in uh, San Diego on December 5th receiving our awards. So a little bragging rights right there for uh, right. Carlin Early College. Congratulations, Justin. No harm uh, doing a little bit of bragging. I think you're just proud of our kids and proud of our staff. Absolutely. So are you using the program mapper at all at McCormick? Yeah, so we use it at, we actually start in sixth grade. Uh, so we, we kind of uh, team up program mapper with BC and CCGI and Get Focused, Stay Focused, Success 101 courses to help our students figure out what they're going to be good at. Um, I think what we, a lot of us tend to do is uh, the old way of looking at things is, well, I want to be this but I wanna to go to this school. Do they even have my major? And then I'm gonna decide my career, right? It's totally backwards. We have to figure out what our students' focus is, what they are interested in, what their skill sets are, are gonna target. We have to take those results and point them in a direction where they're gonna find more success in the classes that are more programmed and fitted to fit their skill sets, and then make sure that we're supporting that as they travel towards the direction of their career after high school. Once they get uh, to sixth grade, they do CCGI, which they start taking surveys to figure out what their skill sets are going to be, what their skill sets will push them in the direction of. And when they come in in ninth grade, actually at the end of eighth grade, our high school counselors being a K through 12 school, TK through 12, where we can articulate all the way down to any level that we would like at our high school, down to kindergarten if I'd like, uh, we go over to the eighth grade, we go over to the junior high, and we meet with our eighth graders, we, we have them look at Program Mapper, we talk about what BC has to offer, we talk to them about what their CCGI results were, and we start to get them directed in a pathway that they're going to be able to guide themselves through high school, achieve at least nine college credits to 60 college credits, and complete as many of the uh, guided pathways as possible. So the mapper actually gives us a very good idea as to where their path's going to go so they don't waste time taking courses that are not going to be transferable either to CSUB, to BC, or to any other school. So I've got a hypothetical question for you, Justin. Um, so you put yourself through college. Uh, yes. We were talking earlier and telling me about that. If you'd had the program mapper then, do you think that would have been uh, helpful for you? Uh, I, could, I could tell you a very short story. Uh, when uh, I went to, I'm a Golden Ram, I'm a Pennsylvania uh, boy, so uh, from Westchester University of Pennsylvania. I remember specifically, um, I took a year and a half off from school and I went back after it, I did a year, realized elementary education was not my direction of where I wanted to go, but I knew I wanted to be an educator, took a year and a half off to figure that out. But I remember going to Westchester University, getting accepted to the school um, and auditioning for the music program, not getting accepted, and walking down the street trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, I knew I wanted to be a principal, I knew that was ultimately my end goal, but I also knew I wanted to impact student lives, and then what I found myself doing was walking to the registrar's office and looking at this big wall of random names of majors. I uh, didn't have a lot of support through high school where somebody was telling me, hey, your skill set lays into this. They just said, hey, you're a good singer, go for music. Um, no, I'm not going to sing for anybody. Um, so the valley air has totally killed my throat. Anyways, um, just kidding. Uh, so I, um, not really. Anyways, I, um, I looked at the wall, couldn't figure out what it was, and I saw this large word, kinesiology, right? And uh, of course, my young mind said, oh, PE, right? Um, but I read into it, saw that it was kinesiology and health sciences, working with body science and um, athletic training and things like that. And, and I was finally able to figure out what really one of my passions was. But when you open up that card catalog and you have nobody that is an adult helping you, nobody guiding you, nobody giving you direction, and you're looking at this thing like that picture that you just saw of a book with a bunch of numbers on it, I was pretty intimidated, not to lie. I had no idea what exact path I was supposed to take. If I was not the type of person that didn't take the initiative myself and was willing to take risks and understood I'm not going to get direct answers right away when I try to find them immediately, I probably wouldn't have been successful. So um, seeing something like the program mapper where I can sit down and I can spend my own time going through different items that are gonna help guide my path, it's gonna make it so much easier for our students. And our students actually have already mentioned how much they appreciate the fact that they know they're not wasting 
their time taking courses that will not end up being transferable to CSUB if they choose to go there. So you think there's something to this guided pathways thing? Oh, 100%. Yeah. So yes. students maybe want to complete in, in a timely manner. I'm incredibly jealous that I'm still paying off a large sum of student loans. Right, saving time and money. Uh, so let's, let's turn to our student panelist, Samantha Polito, <laughs> president of the Student Government Association at Bakersfield College. Um, so I, I, Samantha, I think of you as something as an academic superstar. Um, Samantha, you're, you're graduating, I think, with two associate degrees. Uh, it might be up to three by now. Three. three. Okay. It will be. It will be three. STEM. Uh, it's physics. Did you? And you picked up engineering after all? Um, no. No. It's computer science, um, physics, and mathematics. Computer yeah. science, physics, and mathematics. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and, and in a fairly, uh, you know, economic period of time too. Uh, so. So as an academic superstar, the program mapper wasn't around when you started, but um, if, if it had been, do you think you would have been able to make good use of it? Would it have helped you in any way with your, with your journey? Oh, definitely. I, so I, uh, my first impression on the program mapper was thank you, because I know that there are students right now that struggle with figuring out what they want, um, how to schedule their classes and what they want to do. And mostly when you're in high school, um, about to go to college, you're not sure what you're wanting to do. Um, I know for sure it's gonna help students in high school that are transitioning from um, high school to BC, um, definitely, um, through the program mapper, because I saw how each one had a pathway and each one had a major, and how the major correlates to a certificate, which is fantastic. Um, Students right now are struggling with figuring out which is the right pathway. And for me, when I started off at BC, I was one of those people, students, that wanted to figure it out by themselves. Um, then I figured out that I needed help and I went to my counselor because the information I couldn't despite, um, decipher it. So <laughs> because of all the um, different little codes how you guys explained it. Um, yeah. If this, then this. And, but if that, then not this, but yes. Yes, A lot exactly. of that logic. Yes, and I think through the program mapper, I compared it when on my first impression, I went to my major, computer science, and I compared it to how I kind of had uh, my classes for the past three years. And it would have helped so much because I did not know what general ed I should take for each semester, comparing it to my major requirements and how I can balance that out. Um, so it was very helpful and I believe it's very helpful for students for the future. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> All right, thank you, Samantha. Um, so what we have uh, also with us on the panel, uh, Dr. Joanna Schilling, president of Cypress College. Cypress College is one of the early adopters of the program mapper. So when what something must have sounded good to you, because you jumped on board really early. Uh, what, what was your first impression of the program mapper and, and why did you think it made sense for Cypress College to get involved? Yeah, thanks, Craig. Um, so we are a very early adopter, so I cannot tell you all of the great results that we expect are going to come from this, but uh, uh, just to just to go back in time, when I first uh, became an administrator, so in 2000, uh, 2005, I was a dean of arts at Rio Hondo College, and I had a student come to me. He was an art student, and he was one of the students that we all see on a regular basis who had literally been at the college probably over 10 years. It was start and stop, and life happens, and come back, and but he was trying to persist, and he he came into my office one day and he said, I just need somebody to tell me how to do this. And it's a little bit like what you said, Samantha. So, um, and so I said, well, well what, are you, what, what are your counselors telling you? What are, and so he gives me this sheet that is all of those, check this box, and then you can choose from these 10 choices and this, et cetera, et cetera. So we worked with a counselor and just put him on a plan. And it was sort of guided pathways, program mapper, you know, way back in the old days. And he completed uh, within the next year and a half and actually ended up going to uh, Cal State Bakersfield um, and graduated uh, with a bachelor's degree. And that really was kind of a wake up call for me that we were not helping to guide students clearly. 
When I went to Cerritos College as a vice president of, of uh, instruction, we actually implemented what we called a completion dashboard. And that was a sort of a rudimentary tool so a student could sign on to their portal and it would say, hi, Samantha, you are 65% completed with your GE or 35% with your major, and here's what you need to do to, to finish. And it was complicated. It took a long time. It was clunky. Um, I'm not even sure if Cerritos is still using it. Now I'm at Cyprus. So when I saw Program Mapper, that was uh, something that I knew uh, our students want, they're asking for, they need. Um, what's interesting about Program Mapper um, is that it isn't just guided pathways for students, it's also guided pathways for all of us because it helps to clarify for every person on the campus exactly what is needed for this particular degree. I, I really want to commend, um, you know, all of you in this room are the ones who are doing the work. As a president, I get to talk about it, but the work is done by all of the people in this room, and I especially want to acknowledge Kathleen Ryland, who is our dean of CTE, right here, taking pictures. <laughs> and uh, she, Kathleen has been the driver between Program Mapper and Program Finder, which you can see up on your screen here. So Program Finder is the pre portion of this, and it's also by Concentric Sky, and that helps students to identify what they're, the pathways they're already in and how that move, transitions to either a, a four-year institution or a two-year institution. And, um, and that is really critical in working with our partners like Justin, um, that we are talking to all of our partners, and so we have started with our uh, our, our two, uh, sorry, your, our high schools. You can see in the graphic there that our we have an agreement called the Anaheim Pledge with Anaheim Union High School District, and every single one of our dual enrollment classes, we don't give our high schools the option to. to do one class, they're all pathways. And they have really bought into this, and so we are not, so the program finder helps to, to transition, we're not yet using program mapper, but the idea that our high schools also buy into the whole pathway concept, so those students are also seeing a clear pathway before they even start college. So program mapper just helps to outline and show us how we're gonna get there. Thank you. And so we'll circle back and, and I'll ask you a couple more questions maybe about Program Finder that you brought up because that's another interesting aspect of the intersegmental curricular sharing that's going on. So we're interested in clarifying that path from high school into the college system. Um, so Chris, I want to ask you a couple questions. So you've been working, so you're a professor of kinesiology at CSUB, yes. uh, at CSU Bakersfield. And you've been uh, working on intersegmental program mapping with your colleagues at Bakersfield College. And um, what are some of the, the benefits and challenges of that work that you've engaged in? Yes. Um, well, let, let me step back and, and say that I've been at CSUB for 22 years uh, now, and this is my eighth year. I serve in the capacity as the department chair for kinesiology. And so I've been involved, even when I, uh, when I started eight years ago as being department chair at the statewide level in terms of just identifying, helping to create those ADTs and what courses were going to be part of that ADT that would uh, transfer into the CSU system. So. I have uh, started very early on in that process, and um, the map, some of the, the benefits and challenges uh, of the process and going from that first step to the ADTs and now the program mapper, which I'm very excited about, and then hopefully some next steps that will occur with that process. Um, one of the benefits I think that I have at um, CSUB uh, in the relationship with BC is that I work very closely with their department chair in terms of making sure that our curriculum is aligned. Uh, a few times a year we minimally have a phone conversation, whether it's about courses or maps or getting students into our program or being guest lecture, whatever the case might be. And I think that's a real critical part of it. That has to be an ongoing relationship where the kinesiology department is talking very directly with our uh, colleagues at uh, Bakersfield College. Uh, and so I think that's one of the, the positives. And also, Another benefit that I've seen uh, in terms of getting students uh, on track right away. And our challenge is we have so many students coming in 
Uh, kinesiology is a very rapidly growing uh, program uh, and has been flooded in the last uh, few years. And so now students wanting to use kinesiology as a gateway to some uh, STEM fields, medical programs, physical therapy, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, uh, occupational therapy, physician's assistant. So not necessarily going in the traditional science route. So I think these kind of maps, one, just educating students as early as we possibly can about what those careers and fields are uh, so that they know before they step on campus at BC or CSUB. So it doesn't take that first or second year to really figure out what uh, track they want to go because some of those fields really are very, and are in kinesiology, it's very structured in, in some of the early science courses. And so it's very important that students know, get a handle on where they want to go so they can get those courses early to stay on track to finish in a timely uh, fashion. Uh, some of the challenges um, I think have been keeping the information updated and getting it to students in a very easy fashion, which is why I love the program uh, Mapper, because if a student comes to me or I'm communicating uh, with the high schools or any of the programs, we can just go to the site, click, 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 and have the, the coursework there. Um, so I don't see outdated forms or information or when course numbers change, hopefully that information, the technology will allow us to keep it updated. Uh, very quickly on a very regular basis. And so I think that's gonna be one uh, benefit um, um, to it. So I think, that, again, the challenge, making sure that uh, they are current and update and students know exactly which map gets them uh, to what uh, pathway and what career that they wanna get into. Sure, and, and that it's accessible and, right. and easily consistently available. Um, which is why it's so important that it's mobile friendly. So it's unlike P a PDF map, which can be kind of a bear to pull up on your phone, the, you know, these maps are, are uh, adaptable to smaller screen sizes, so they work well. Um, now, Chris, I also know that you're, you're passionate about um, increasing representativeness in STEM fields. And so I, I think some of your intersegmental work um, with our high school partners uh, has been, um, you know, focused around getting uh, students from high school um, into STEM fields uh, post-secondary. So has any of your intersegmental kind of curricular work shed light on, on the challenge of sort of say getting more women into STEM fields? Uh, yeah, I think it's, that's a real, um, like you said, a passion of mine trying to um, assist uh, uh, girls and women in terms of uh, getting their high school education and be able to carry that on and follow through uh, to completion at CSUB in a STEM field, whether, whether it be medicine or physical therapy, whatever, engineering, whatever the case might be, um, helping them to identify that, that early. Um, one of the, and, and part of it is it just, it makes sense to me that we just do this to really be an advocate for the student that might not have their, again, first generation, they don't have that information coming uh, from their family members. Um, trying to reach out to them at that high school level. So one thing that, that w resulted since I've been a chair is that we dual enroll uh, a couple of uh, courses in kinesiology. We're, we work with uh, now the Regional Occupational Center. I think Brian Miller is here uh, earlier. And I had a, a conversation with their uh, board yesterday and just talking about we dual enroll the uh, care and prevention of athletic injuries as one course that's uh, part of our uh, ADT also with BC and the CPR, and I believe they do the same uh, with those courses. So the benefits to that is I think the last number I saw we had 56 students dual enrolled in that, which is great to give them an early jump, that's four units of academic credit um, between that and the um, CPR class that we do that they can bring in. But I think the, the biggest benefit is that they're in that senior year, junior senior year, getting a real feel for what the career is that they possibly can go into or other careers. They get hands-on experience. They get the same exact class that they're gonna be taking at the university and getting credit early on. So they get a unit jump, they get a content knowledge jump, they get a career uh, uh, exploration jump uh, very early. And so I think that uh, we're gonna find is gonna be really beneficial. So um, again, reaching out to those high school students in that type of program is, is beneficial. Yeah, and you, you mentioned the importance of career and connecting uh, students with career. We heard about that from the previous panel as well. Mm -hmm. And research shows that when students are able to visualize themselves in that career, they understand that there is a, a concrete uh, road that will take them into that career, the kinds of 
remuneration that they can expect to earn in, the, in those fields um, and what, that, what a difference that could make for themselves and for their families that they're much more likely to complete. So uh, again, it's about clarifying the path and laying it out so that they can actually see themselves making it there and, and believing um, in, the, in the reality of achieving that goal. So I'm gonna circle back uh, to Dr. Schilling. Uh, and so as an early adopter, um, you've done a lot of work with the, with the program mapper. And um, you've, moved to, you're, you've moved already to full online implementation. So if we go to the Cypress College website, we'll see your program mapper implementation there. Um, what do you hope that, and you've mentioned program finder, so what do you hope that the program mapper, program finder will help you achieve? And I think we have some slides that we can share to the, on, on these points. Yeah. So again, I think the, the, in the early stages as we're mapping, so we've mapped 95% of our programs and certificates. So it's uh, 265 of our 278 total programs. It's been a lot of work. What's holding up that last 5% now? <laughs> well, maybe by the time we get back, okay. it'll be done. Kathleen's um, on it. Yeah. And um, 178 of those are certificates, 56 associate degrees, 31 associate for transfer degrees, and we do have a Bachelor of Science in Funeral Services. So um, all of that is mapped. And the, one of the byproducts that has been a, an unexpected surprise, and when I mentioned before about program, that it's guided pathways for all of us, is that uh, I think the faculty for the first time as they're partnering with their counseling cohorts, um, they're really seeing the full implementation of what their students go through. You know, faculty get very focused on their courses, their discipline experts, they're really looking at their majors but not always aware of how that really affects a student through the whole migration through their college experience. And so ha opening that up and having that awareness when you're mapping is, is a very, very powerful thing. And so I would say that right now that is allowing for conversations to happen on campus that weren't happening before. And, um, and that is exciting. And I, I hope that that has created an urgency. You know, that is my role. Uh, is to create that urgency. I think Sonia said it before. Is this good enough? You know, we are increasing, like many of you, our, our um, certificate and degree um, awarding. Um, it's, it's exciting to see that, making leaps and bounds in the last few years. Our completion rate is in the mid-50s, and so, great, right? But no, I mean, if it's in the mid-50s, what happened to the other 45%, right? So we have to create an urgency and people have to, but everyone has to kind of know their role in this. So I would say that what you see in front of you here, so this is the way that our website looks like and how is the portal into Program Mapper. So every program has a tile, so it's a visual tile. So that's the first thing that a student sees. What would be interesting to me as they're exploring, as they're looking. We also have all of our uh, pathways are career first, so meaning that they meet with a career counselor. We don't have general counselors anymore. They are all embedded counselors. And the career counselors are the ones who meet with the, the students who are exploring or are new to the college or first want to meet with a counselor. They all go to a career counselor. So the embedded counselors are there to really be guiding the students through their meta major or their academic area in, of interest. So a student can come to our site and click, this is, happens to be our uh, CTE site, they can click on what is interesting to them. Go into the next one. And then if they clicked on automotive, automotive technology and all of them look like this, they're going to see a lot of information. Um, we also we have videos on some of them. We tell them a little bit about it, about the program, um, what kind of career opportunities there are. So this is really more in that first entry as a student comes to Cypress College and they're still trying to figure it out. So. And then, the, uh, so Program Finder is, um, is that first entry before they come, if they're in high school, so if you wanna go to the next slide. So they see something very similar. Um, this, is, this is created more for our high school students in the areas that they're already using and are familiar with. So they can also see a visual tile. Let's just say that um, I'm interested in uh, the hospitality field, so I'm gonna click on hospita hospitality, tourism, and recreation they're gonna to go to this map. So all of what Program Finder is 
doing right now is all of the community colleges in Orange County are mapped to Program Finder and all of the high schools. So the student can go and say, who offers hospitality? And Cyprus happens to be one of them, but there are also other colleges. So they can see all the colleges listed here. They see their map. Sonia talked a little bit about, too, that whole GPS idea. Here it is. This is where all of these colleges are. If you click on the icon for any of those colleges, so if you clicked on Cyprus College, um, Oops. you're going to see not Finishing that. Four. but. Um, <laughs> Did we miss one? I think so. Okay. Well, you're going to see that. <laughs> you're going to you're going to go to. You did say that fellow went to CSU Bakersfield. To the program. Right? Yeah, that's right. So you're going to go to the program, and um, and eventually, then you're going to go to Program Mapper. What we're working on right now is creating that link between Program Finder and Program Mapper, so that the students can already see what they've completed in their gateway programs that are already going in part of their track to program mapper. So, so these are the essential connections. And it also goes backwards, because we can also see the students at the high schools who are in our, those areas. So let's just take hospitality again. So Kathleen's faculty can go in and see that, wow, there's 400 students in this particular high school or across these high schools who are interested in this area. It's a great recruiting tool and outreach to these students. So it's, it's really an, another connection to help us to paint a picture for our students um, and really help our students not feel like they don't even know what questions to ask. Now they start having information so they can start asking questions. They're, they're in the game even if they're first generation. And Correct. it's really an amazing cradle to career vision that's being painted uh, by our panelists here today. So I'd like to just take a moment to thank them and could you join me in <laughs> appreciation for sharing your time, expertise, and perspectives with us today. We uh, probably have time for, you know, uh, at least one, one question. question. One. Exactly one question. Exactly one. Okay, panel, you have one question. Hi, thank you for all your good work on this. This is, this is a really heavy lift. Um, I, I was wondering, does, does Program Mapper integrate into your enrollment um, processes at the school smoothly, or is or is that that a pending project? Is that something you're exploring? What what happens after they they know what classes they need to take? Do they then have to get out of that and then go someplace else? What what happens? Yeah. Yeah. So currently, sort of one of the the double-edged uh, aspects of the program mapper is, is it doesn't collect any PII. So there's no login, so it can't translate over and, and roll into uh, a schedule. Um, yet. Uh, that being said, we're um, uh, working with the Foundation for California Community College to integrate it with CCC MyPath so that that would then be uh, an integration. Um, in general, one of the principles of the program mapper is openness and integration. So it, it has been integrated with um, other catalog pro uh, products such as eLumens eCatalog and uh, Curriculet's uh, Meta e-catalog as well so that those can pull up program maps in the context of their online catalog products, which is pretty awesome. So um, the, uh, the general uh, philosophy behind it is uh, open standards and interconnectivity. So we're, we're very uh, interested in exploring the connections too so that students could kind of just click like make it so on the map, right? That map looks good, click, da -da 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 -da, all of those things go into there their course schedule shopping cart. So that, that is somewhere that we do see it going eventually. 